I've just received the new Brother Extra Tough FS60X sewing machine. So I just wanted to go through and uh, do a first impressions video really and just see whether it, it does what it advertises on the box. And I, I just want to make it clear too that I don't represent Brother as such. I sell their machines, I sell other brands. When it comes to these sorts of videos I will try and be as impartial as possible. I'm an independent repair person so uh, you know Brother has not given me this machine. I've bought it uh, myself just so that I can do this uh, review here and I'll also do some other videos where I go through and uh, tear the machine down, get inside, have a good look at the mechanicals and the electronics and bits and pieces and also I'll may do a, a basics video on how to use the machine as well. So let's get in and have a close look at the machine. So we've got the extra tough computerized sewing machine. It's a heavy duty metal frame. They're also boasting the powerful motor here. 60 built in stitches. Suitable for denim. So you know that's always handy. And it's electronic which means that all of the uh, pattern stitches here are all electronically controlled rather than using mechanical cams to do the zigzagging and the reversing of the feed dogs things like that. Suitable for stretch fabrics it does say down here as well. When sewing stretch fabrics refer to the sewing guide. So let's crack the box open here. See what we get. Okay we've got the uh, obligatory dust cover there. We've got a bunch of attachments. I'll go through those in more detail. Power cord, uh, manual, some paperwork and we'll remove the top poly there. And we've got the foot controller in here. Electronic foot controller. And then lift it out of its bottom poly. I guess it'll uh, tell us in the manual what the weight is, but it's it's pretty light. I can say that. Is that a good thing or or not? I mean, it's, it'd be nice and easy to carry around. That's for sure. Okay, we've got some bits and pieces taped on here. I'll just remove this tape here. That's holding on this quick reference guide here. And then we've got a uh, protector here. Protective card there. And a protective sheet under the presser foot there. One holding the flatbed tray there, and then I'll take this protective sheet here off. Yeah, looks like standard sort of uh, brother type fear there, I would say. A plastic throat plate there. Oh no, the, the actual throat plate itself is metal. We've got a plastic uh, sort of outer here with guidelines on it and inches and uh, metric here, centimeters, millimeters, sorry. We've got the little slide out bobbin cover there. It's also got imperial and metric guidelines there. So it's a drop-in style bobbin. Needle threader here, always handy. And then a little lever there at the back for the button holding. Fairly standard sort of fear for these sorts of machines. We've got a, uh, a big dial here with a, uh, this is the tension, top tension dial. That is clicky. So there's no way that's going to vibrate loose there. And we've got our standard tension range here. Uh, so they're implying here you, you sort of stick between three and five tension there, 4 being about normal, and you can go right down to 0 there, or right up to, to 9, 
So generally I would, um, it's, it's difficult to say exactly where you would set that with a heavier thread and a he heavier jeans needle and doing heavy jeans work, but more than likely I would say you'd probably be up around the 8 area. Uh, that just comes with trial and error, so we'll, we'll have a look at that a bit later on. Reversing here, uh, needle positioning uh, for your needle up, needle down positioning. Speed controller here. So there we've got the little uh, display here. We've got buttons for selecting your stitches down here. So from 00, zero through to 59. So you've got 60 stitch functions there. So that'll be your uh, tens unit and your units there. And these ones here, from uh, look from what I've seen on the box, that's for your stitch length and stitch width adjustments there. Have a look around the side here, we've got standard hand wheel there and on off switch here, foot controller plug there and your power plug down here. Quality and technology by Brother Industries Limited Japan. You can see there they're uh, really pushing the fact that it's a Japanese company um, but you can also see down here that it's made in Vietnam. Now nothing wrong with that a lot of machines are made in Vietnam, China, uh, Taiwan these days. So, you know, uh, that's it's, it's pretty normal. Uh, model number FS60X, product code 888-N00. This is the 200, or well, it's actually uh, multi-voltage, so you, you can use these in the USA uh, on your 110 volt. We're 240 volt here, so uh, 50 hertz or 60 hertz. We have 50 here in New Zealand, and it's a 43 watt. So that'll be total power, including the bulbs. But the bulbs won't draw a lot of power these days. It'll more than likely be LEDs. So you know, it's not like it's running a 15 watt bulb. It's quite a nice sort of textured, uh, well, very slightly textured white plastic. Pretty standard. On the back of the arm here we've got the drop feed switch here and you'll see here we've got the foot lifter, press foot lifter, that's the back of the buttonhole stopper there. If we have a look on top we've got your standard type uh, bobbin winder, the single spool pin there for one cone of thread. Uh, I think maybe there's a, is that that hole there more than likely will be for a second spool pin, but I'll, I'll confirm that. And then we've got our bobbin winder tensioner here with a little diagram on threading here. There's a handy little diagram on the uh, bed of the machine here on the arm. And it's showing you that you should only uh, thread the bobbin so that it turns anti-clockwise when threaded and also shows you the trail of the thread for when you're threading a brand new bobbin and it also shows points out to make sure that the thread goes under the thread tensioner there properly and it doesn't bypass it so you know handy little little tip there so yeah feels you know reasonably solid yeah quite nice let's have a look at the accessories here Got a buttonhole foot here with the, the little guide at the back there that you can put your button into and it determines the size of the buttonhole to be sewn automatically. Quite handy. Unpicker, just a uh, standard unpick. Uh, blind hemming, that's a blind hemming foot. Try and get past the cat here. That's labelled R. Spare needles, a little brush, and a little pick there of some sort. I guess that's what that's for. A little screwdriver there for the main plate. Three spare bobbins. There's one in the machine. Or snap on type feet. Zip foot there. Button sewing foot. Over overlocking. I think that's some sort of overlocking foot. Foot G. And then you've got your foot in, which will be handy for satin stitching, uh, stretch type 
stitching may be close, you know, closely, densely packed stitches. And the foot that comes on it is just a, uh, you know, standard quick release, snap on type. Just a little button on the back there to release the standard foot there. That's the J, J foot. That's the accessories. Let's just have a quick look at the quick reference card here. So we've got a uh, little QR code here with a reference to another video here with a look at that, preparing the bobbin thread. This is page one of two. Page one is bobbin and page two is top threading. On this piece here it tells you about the operation keys and LCD. And then it tells you how to select a, a stitch here. Turn the machine on obviously. Select your pattern that you want uh, just by dialing it up here and then select your presser foot that you want to attach there and also handy tells you what size the bobbin is. Yeah that's quite handy because uh, a lot of the problems I see with sewing machines are caused by incorrect bobbins so it actually it tells you how wide the bobbin is. It doesn't tell you what diameter it is, uh, just the height of the bobbin. So it goes along here, down here, turn the machine on, wind the bobbin, put your foot down, winds the bobbin and then across here to seven where you're uh, cutting the thread on the bobbin, take the bobbin off the spindle, turn the machine off. So they're suggesting you turn the machine off and then open the bobbin cover there, install the bobbin, thread it, put the bobbin cover back on. So they're suggesting you turn the machine off when you do that. And then um, also with the top thread, they're suggesting here step one, to make sure the machine's off. You know, lift the presser foot and then follow along here. You know, um, top threading. Come around along the bottom here, to here and up this way here. and leave a tail of 10 centimeters quite clear nice little quick start guide there okay so the manual we've got we'll jump the gun a little bit here <laughs> caution for handling of protective tape so they're telling you how to handle the protective tape here the blue tape adhered to the area shown in the illustration is protective tape for shipping be sure to remove this tape before turning on the power if the power is turned on before the tape is removed the needle bar may not operate this is not a malfunction. <laughs> if the needle bar does not operate, turn the power off and back on and then manually turn the balance wheel one revolution. The needle bar will operate normally. What's this? This is included accessories with the, uh, this is quite handy actually, it's got the uh, brother part numbers if you want to reorder parts. Operations manual. Be sure to read this document before using the machine. We recommend keeping it nearby for future reference. Anyway, I'm not going to go too far through showing you all this, but in typical uh, brother fashion, it's very clear, very well laid out. Manual goes through threading, top and bottom threads, needle fabric slash needle thread in combination. I mean, that's important information that goes through you know, type of fabric, lightweight, polyester thread, cotton thread, uh, the weight of the thread, the size of the needle, and the st uh, stitch length to be applied there. So it goes through, you know, top stitching, stretch, heavy, medium weight fabric. Checking the needle, I would, if I, were, if I suspected that the needle was uh, no good, I would just replace it with a brand new one out of the packet. Yeah, they're just saying here the this end of the screwdriver here is for undoing the needle clamp screw and there's a little note there to say do not apply strong force uh, installing a needle sewing with twin needle replacing the presser foot sewing basics you know selecting stitches starting to sew uh, it goes through a little bit of tensioning here overcasting blind hemming buttonhole sewing sewing on buttons you know Fairly standard sort of fear. Bar tacking, a little bit of maintenance here, cleaning, upper thread, tangling, goes through tangling. You know how to undo a jam here. Cleaning, a list of uh, troubleshooting symptoms here, and little index at the back there. Error codes, 
It's not a bad little manual, really. Press the foot here. Just a uh, standard uh, three three point five millimeter plug there. Power cable there. Just a standard um, what we call a figure eight type power cable there. The uh, New Zealand and Australia. I think Australia have the same plugs as us. Cover here. Covers the machine nicely there. Let's plug it in and see how it goes. So this end here into the side of the machine there. This end into the wall socket. Foot controller. Plugs in just down here. And turn the machine on. So our default startup here, we've got uh, stitch zero selected and it's recommending foot J. 2.5 millimeter stitch length with no width. The main subject of today's video, apart from you know giving you a quick uh, rundown unboxing of this new extra tough machine, is to just see how it goes on the likes of uh, this jeans material here. Now this is probably not the heaviest denim that you could find, uh, but it's pretty heavy. This this particular lump here that's 12 layers of denim there you've got a flat seam here that's four layers and then it's turned in so it's turned over once and then turned over twice for the um, for the hem there and you can see here that the stitching is you know this is obviously done on a an industrial machine that's specifically designed for the job it's pretty you know pretty heavy heavy going it's quite a thick lump of denim there. What I want to do is I want to try and replicate that as closely as possible by running through some 36, uh, sorry 35 weight uh, polyester, 100% polyester thread. This is the sort of uh, you know the gold jeans type coloured thread that you find. So they're using on the back here probably a thread that's not quite as heavy. It's it's pretty heavy though. I might have to use a lighter weight thread on the bobbin. I'm I'm just not too sure. I'm I'm going to you know really put it put it through its paces here. So let's see, you know how this turns out. But let's start by winding a bobbin here. Run with that there. Threading the bobbin there. I'm uh, going to be using these uh, Jean Smith's jeans needles. This, uh, these are a size 110 uh, metric or a Imperial 18. I'll make sure that's reasonably tight because you don't want the needle coming out. Let's put it there. <clears throat> I'll be running with the standard J foot there and I'm also going to be using this little handy little attachment it's actually from a Husqvarna an old Husqvarna sewing machine and it, it's quite handy for handling um, some of these lumps and bumps and I'll show you uh, how and it, you know that would be easy enough to to replicate it's just a little a fork type system there that's a thicker piece there uh, so that is yeah three point about 3.3 mil and the thinner part this one is 2.12 so two different thicknesses there so let's uh, thread her up here okay now I, I don't really expect the, the uh, needle threader to handle this weight thread it might let's just try it oh yeah yep needle threader works well let's start on this here now I'll start on the the thin area this is our really thick lump here I'll, I'll start on the thin area we'll come around here there's a, a, a thinner lump there that's nine layers of denim there Around here is three layers, and then here, this big lump, that's 12 layers beefy denim. I'll take the uh, flatbed attachment off, and we'll make use of the free arm facility here. 
So let's just try and go around this seam here. I want to have the needle in the center of its throw. So you can see 00, zero is the left hand side and zero, 01 is the middle in the center there. So I want to select one there and I think a stitch length pretty high. So I've gone the maximum. I'm taking a guess at about about eight for the tension. And let's see how we go here. Just do a wee back, back tack here. Just on the slow speed there, just for a start. I'll speed her up a little bit. Seems to be handling that okay. That's three layers. Yeah, stitch length's probably a little bit too long. It's, it's handling that nicely though. I'll drop, I'm dropping the stitch length down to four. And we're coming up to nine layers. Yeah. yeah, that went over there quite nicely. You can see there the stitch length uh, density, stitch density changed there. That's when basically the machine was coming along here on the flat and then the, the machine basically had to climb a hill to get up onto this nine layers. Uh, that, that caused the stitch length there to shorten slightly. Um, but it came off the back okay. Uh, quite often on the back here of the lump, that's a sort of a sharp drop off there and that can leave some slackness in this uh, fabric here and quite often a machine will slip stitch or skip stitches there but that that's handled it, it well uh, the big test is going to be coming up here here we go with uh, 12 layers coming up so I'm going to provide some assistance by pulling on the back slightly. I don't want to pull too hard otherwise it'll cause the uh, needle to deflect or flex and possibly break. So I'm just going to slowly uh, come through here. I'm, I'll go down to the slowest speed. Now I'm providing a little bit of extra force there. Not much. Well, that, that seemed to go through that denim quite nicely there. Oh, Molly, watch your tail. Let's do a back stitch here. Molly, that's not helpful. Get, no. Oh. Oh, stitch length looks pretty good, actually. I think that's about right. We're set to four. So here we have 12 layers of denim and absolutely no problem whatsoever. It just ate that up really. Uh, you can see again uh, stitch density change or so that's actually uh, looks more like a slip stitch there where the, uh, th this material here on the back end as the presser foot is coming over this lump, the presser foot's being held up off this fabric here by this lump and that causes this fabric to um, what's called flag and that means that it's moving up and down so when the needle comes down through the and penetrates the fabric and then does its small needle bar rise to form a loop at the back of the needle a loop of thread that the hook comes through and picks up well what happens is instead of the uh, thread looping the thread actually uh, the fabric actually moves up with the needle and causes the loop to um, either malform or not form at all and when the hook comes around to pick it up off the needle pick the loop up there's no loop there or it's malformed and it causes a slip stitch so more than likely that's what that is you can get around this by using this little tool and what you do there is when you're coming off the seam is you apply this little tool here to so that as the foot is coming off 
this lump here, the needle goes down this little slot here and the presser foot straddles this plastic piece here and therefore that holds this fabric tight down in there and stops that flagging motion. What I'll do is I'll demonstrate that. Let's, I'll try and make it slip stitch again and I'm, I'm just going to um, fold this over three times like this. Okay, this is definitely not going to be the prettiest uh, hem you've seen, but I'm just sort of winging it here. I'm not pinning anything. I'm just turning it under to make three layers of fabric for this thing to go through. It's, it's three layers long here, and then we're up to the nine layer. Now, you saw before that we had this stitch density change here. And that's because the machine had to climb up this little hill here. So we're looking at it from another angle here. Got this 180 degrees turn. But if we use this, what you can do, come up closer. And with the needle down, lift the presser foot. And then you slide this in from behind here. I might need the thicker... I'll go for the thicker side, that's the 3mm and that, and then you put your press foot back down and that just holds the presser foot up oh, well it, 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 it gives it a little bit of a ramp there to, to sit on while it uh, so that it doesn't have to go up that steep sort of incline Let's see how we go there absolutely no worries whatsoever as far as punching the needle through the through the denim and then this just comes out as it comes off the uh, press foot there okay back onto three layers and it sounds okay you know just considering what it's doing okay now this is the challenging part here we've got this is a, a steep lump coming up here, very steep here. I'll just drop the speed down. I'll come up to the lump as close as I can. So at that point there, the lump is actually pushing on the front. Let's get you a slightly different angle there. You can see here that the lump is actually pushing on the front of the foot. So that's going to cause the machine to uh, resist feeding. So that's when it's a good time to lift the foot and if you've got one of these tools or if you make something like it, slip that in behind there and that again just provides a little ramp there. I'm going to assist uh, the feeding a little bit. Yep. Might have, might have struggled a little bit there and then what you can do is um, now because you've got uh, this lump here that you'll see the presser foot is being held up by the lump you know if I just get my tweezers there I'll just try and uh, show you what's what goes on here is you've got this sort of slack that this this piece of material here is not being held down by the foot it's just sort of floating around and that's what causes that slip stitching coming off the other end like we saw back here, the slip stitching here. We're coming off in a different direction this time, but it's still got the same effect. So what we can do is we can put this little tool in the front here, and then you have to be careful because you know you need to stop before the needle gets to this here, so you need to keep an eye on it. So you can just run off onto the tool, Probably, that's probably far enough. I'll, I'll just bring the tool back a little bit more. I just want to get one more stitch in. And then if you let the tool go, you'll see that the press foot now drops down and is holding the fabric firm here now. Okay, and then, so we shouldn't get any slip stitching there. Let's see what we've got. 
Well, that, that actually made it worse, I think. It didn't like that at all. Big slip stitch there. Another one. Yeah, totally missed stitching there. Uh, maybe it's a matter of getting the tool in there a little bit further. I'm not quite sure, but that's definitely slip stitching coming off the back here. Looks quite good coming up to the seam. I mean, we, we got a little bit of stitch density change here, just where the stitches started to close up a little bit. We got on top of there, that's all good, and then just, yeah, coming off, off the back there is not flashed. Let's, let's see if we can improve that. I'll try it without the tool, uh, but what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to hold, uh, just sort of help it across. So when you're doing this, you, you don't want to be pulling too hard at the back here to cause the fabric to slip through the machine over the feed dogs. You just want to be assisting it enough to um, help the feed dogs really. You, there is a danger if you pull too hard on the back here that you could flex the needle and break the needle. So we're coming up to this lump again here. Let's have another go. I mean it's quite a bit to expect of a domestic machine. Through. It's going to go down onto the low speed. Yeah, all good. It's okay. I'm just. There, there may not be slip stitching. What? That, yeah, it looks like it. It's either slip stitching or it's just the fact that this lump here is coming out the back of the foot as it's um, sliding the fabric a little bit and it's making the stitches appear longer. Well, it's making the stitches longer. Either that or it's slip stitching. I'm not quite sure exactly if it's slip stitching or not, but it looks like it. Well, I'll try with the little tool again. There's a small hesitation as it's punching the um, uh, needle through the fabric there and then the, I think the electronics uh, detect that and provide more power to the motor. Maybe if I push down on the actual tool, just one step at a time there. Quite long stitches. So we're just we're looking at this one here in the middle here, looking good there. Again, yeah, there might be some slip stitching going on. I don't know actually whether I'm I'm going to have a close look. It's a bit hard from behind the camera, but I'm I'm going to have a close look here to see whether I mean it could just be the fact that you know that fabric is kind of being. Um, it's kind of got a little bit of a fold here, so when the needle steps off, it looks like a it's it's a long stitch because uh, when it's under the foot there, it's it's probably that sort of scenario there. I'll get your side on to try and explain what I'm thinking here. So I'm wondering if the the fabric is kind of um, sort of closing up a little bit here, you know, maybe just folding up just a little bit. I'm exaggerating this, but when the needle steps down off there, uh, you know, if you look at it from the needle's point of view, top down, uh, it probably is the right stitch length, but when the fabric is laid flat like that, it stretches that stitch out. So I'm thinking that more than likely this here that looks like slip stitching is, is quite possibly a distortion of the, of the fabric. I'm not sure that one might be a slip stitch, but the I think this one here is probably not a slip stitch. It's it's either slippage or some sort of distortion 
of the fabric. Also, I've just noticed there that to, you know, this top tension might be a little bit too tight. So I've reduced the top tension down to six here. Let's see how that goes. If the top tension's too loose, it will you'll see loops underneath. So let's see how this goes here. It's gonna go on a slower speed there. I think that was the slip stitch, I could tell by the way the thread looped. That's the outside seam there. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure that was a slip stitch, that one there. But that's that's looking better. I think, you know, maybe this tension might be too tight here and it's pulling across. That looks a little bit better. One slip stitch there. Yeah, you know, I don't think that's uh, too big a deal, considering this is just a uh, domestic machine. It's doing really well. And if we have a look on the bottom, there's no real major loops coming through. So even on tension 6, that's doing a really good job. And that's with, you know, quite a heavy thread. That's a size 110 needle. Uh, stitch length is closing up a little bit here, but I could probably help that through make that a little bit better. So it's probably one of those things that you know you uh, you get right with a little bit of trial and error but I would say that's pretty close. I'll probably increase the stitch length maybe by a half. The other thing that I've known uh, for people to do is to actually you know compress this down by giving uh, this lump a good hit with a hammer. <laughs> can make the uh, seam a little bit thinner. I don't know if I'd recommend that but um, uh, it's what I've heard people do. Let's have another wee go here. Slip stitch there. Yeah, I helped it through a little bit there. So, you know, if, um, the stitch length is not so bad here, but definitely does one little slip. Uh, off the back there and I think you know possibly if you time that right you could slip the little tool in um, just to help hold that firmly there. You know when they say this machine's good for jeans I, I uh, would certainly believe them because just looking at that it really handles this you know probably uh, the best that I've seen a modern machine a modern domestic machine do in a long time. You know I'm really impressed with the way that this machine's handled. I'm going to do some comparisons with uh, some other machines, you know, the likes of the Singer Heavy Duty and some of my older machines, the likes of the Beninas and the Husqvarna's and the Elners and things like that. So the sort of more retro Heavy Duty machines, if you like. The other thing I've seen in the literature is that it's got a fixed needle bar mechanism and I'm not quite sure exactly what that means. So keep an eye out for more videos on this machine where I'll go through maybe do a basics video, just uh, basic usage and also uh, maybe a tear down and we'll have a look inside here and see what this fixed needle bar mechanism is all about. And just to have a wee look inside, you know, down in the in the hook area here to see if there's any differences and what, you know, we might be able to glean as to why, you know, this machine's doing such a good job at, uh, you know, punching through all this denim here. Yeah, so uh, keep an eye out for more videos and I thank you very much for watching.